I did not prepare an advertisement for this one. I missed the mark because it's from last month. So, uh, City of Mist is fun. Go check out its shop. And Stibble's Codex is no longer pre-order. You can buy it now on our shop. Also, Grim Hollow's there. Okay, thanks. Enjoy the video. City of Mist is an incredibly unique RPG because you can play it in any setting and as any character. But the most important part of freedom comes with the recommendations. A bit of an explanation as to how you can express that freedom. So the character creation in City of Mist gives you four theme cards that define who you are and what you can do. And these four theme cards are divided into two categories, Mythos and Logos. The more Mythos you have, the more super-powered and unstable you are. The more Logos, the simpler and more tied to reality you are. Not saying that Logos can't be cool, but there's a reason I'm excited to talk about Mythos first. A Mythos is any historic person, event, character, fiction, or story that had an impact on humans. People who awaken these powers through the mist of the city suddenly get powers pertaining to that myth. So a Mythos of King Kong grants incredible strength and a weird desire to kidnap people. A Witch Hunter General can banish certain effects, and a Water God lets you become water. Like mutant X-Men, but based on existing fiction. Like the X-Men. These essentially serve as your player class, but you get several of them, and you define them. So without greater ado, let's look at them. The first of them is Adaptation, the power to change. Adaptation mythos might include Merlin and other wizards, elementals, alien mutations, doppelgangers, time manipulation, and other things that have diverse and reactive effects. It even constitutes the ability to create machines or living puppets, like external things that can help you tackle new situations. Each of the cards that you use to communicate these powers have modifiers called power tags. Instead of looking at a rigid list of actions and then taking one of them, you can attempt anything, provided that some power tags are able to help you out. So a mythos of a nature goddess could suddenly grow medicinal plants to heal their wounds with the power tags uh, ever-changing plants and rapid growth. You get to come up with the names for your own abilities, which is a little hard to balance, but you get used to it. Next up, the Bastion, the power to protect from external dangers. Golems, Immortals, Undead, Heroes with Magic Shields, Abjuration Wizards, and even just Cyborgs. When playing with a Bastion Mythos, you're usually either the Raging Untouchable Barbarian or a Defender of the People. I also like the angle of someone who has a mass of trauma, so this Mythos manifested to defend them from the world around. Their existing character, Lily Chow, has manifested Iron Hans from the Grimm's Fairy Tale. He's literally an invincible giant who is dedicated to protecting their princess. Past the Bastions, we have Diviners, people who can see much more of reality than we can. Diviners include oracles, soothsayers, empaths, time dilators, spidey senses, rapidly developing AI, and all-knowing gods. For the most part, these serve the dual purpose of protecting against the future and attacking the secrets of the past. In the official supplement that I'm writing for them, I have a diviner with the mythos of Mimir, the headless dude who knows too much from Norse mythology. After that, we have the most common type of mythos, expression, raw power forged by raw emotions. As the rift of an expressive mythos, you enact the changes that other people defend themselves from. Their goals and the strength of their emotions change the course of history and affect most of everyone else's lives. Ice queens, witches and sorcerers, politicians, combat masters, giants, nature itself, luck gods and spirits, tricksters, and other self-motivating forces usually fill in their ranks. With one of these mythos, you are scary, but you are important. Next up, mobility, the power to be untethered by most harm and most responsibility. Speedsters, Icarus wings, teleportation, summoned mounts, crazy ninja parkour people, jetpacks, and what have you. Mobility mythos are super fun to play with, and they're really fun to write. I made a biker gang with the mythos of the Wild Hunt, and their bikes can just ride the mist like paved road. After that are relics, objects who own their stories. They keep history intact, and in some cases have as much emotion as the rift that holds them. These I can just name. I don't know, Excalibur, the Infinity Gauntlet, Gandalf's Staff, the Eye of Vecna, Ch Chekhov's Gun, 
the skeleton key, Santa's bag, voodoo dolls, pretty much anything that you'd find either in a museum or locked away. They're super diverse, can be sentient, and could even be cursed. That's the fun of playing with them. Their diversity doesn't really pertain to the character. A rift might have a cursed but enchanted Tonto, and either have to give it up or commit seppuku. I forgot to mention that mythos want their stories to be retold, not abused. Most rifts will eventually meet the same fate as their mythos when it ends. And lastly, subversion. The raw trickster power, very closely related to adaptation but with a pinch of expression. Enchanters and illusionists, commanders of smoke and mirrors, corporate liars, and ancient sins are important angles for this uh, mythos. Most of the time, subversion is defined by its subjects, so anything ranging from mind reading to face stealing to invisibility are all actually tied to the person that is either misunderstanding the effect or being victimized by it. Remember when I said you have four theme cards? Yes, you can actually have four mythos themes. But I suggest starting with two, as having all four will seal the fate for your character. To explain, I played a guy with the powers of Odin, who had a divination theme card as well as expressive runic powers. He eventually became an avatar, but by changing his final card from a city official as his career to an adaptation theme, he had to lose his job. And after that, he was doomed to face Ragnarok and die. Also note that one mythos can have several themes. You don't need two myths. Spider-Man would probably have both mobility and uh, the defense of divination. Someone with the myth of, I don't know, Buddha would probably have luck giving expression and peace of mind that comes from some cosmic bastion. I highly recommend grabbing the books. They'll be linked below. And their expansions feature even more themes like Conjuration, Destiny, and Familiars. I'd love to go through the comments and see a bunch of super obscure inspirations from religions I've never heard of for different mythos. So whatever media that you're inspired by, I'm curious to see. Also, adapting them into New Age characters is amazing. Um, thanks for watching. I'll do the logos next, but until then, more D&D.